Hey you guys doing? This is Arash over at Omid Academy. And today I wanted to go into editing headshots from a real client that I took in downtown San Diego on the um, Canon R6 Mark II. Some were taken on the R5, um, but most of these that you're going to see, um, I think, yeah, all of these that you're going to see were taken on the R6 Mark II with the 85 1.2, not the DS version, but the regular Canon RF 1.2. I know I cheaped out, I apologize. I'll try to save up, maybe make some YouTube money and upgrade. So we're gonna bring those into Lightroom. And if you're not familiar, I do use Lightroom to edit all my photos, nothing different about this shoot. I took, I think like 700 photos and I'm just choosing five random ones that were inside and outside. We took some outside in the streets. We took some inside with the uh, inside a hotel. I think this was at the, Marriott Marquis, shout out to the Marriott Marquis in downtown. Not that we had any permission, but they're pretty lenient. They didn't try to send their uh, security guards to stop us. So first things first, we import those the five photos into Lightroom. Um, I go and I edit the metadata as I always do. I'm going to put um, headshots 2023, copyright. I'm going to put big old rugger productions because that's the name of my company uh, my production company that we do photo and video with and i'm gonna hold shift check up all the photos go to sync make sure they're all um, checked good synchronized perfect go to develop and here's our first photo so i'm going to check over here so that not all the photos are selected i'm going to go to this first photo here and i have my own um Lightroom presets. Yes, I am one of those guys. I I have so many people that were like, what presets do you use? Because people that sell presets are a lot of people, not everyone, a lot of people that do presets and have their own presets don't use them for real work. Meaning the presets I have that I'm, I sell, I also use for real weddings or the LUTs that I use in Premiere, I actually use on every wedding. So these are real life scenarios and I kind of wanted to just prove that to you guys. So with this one, I'm going to go to my headshots and portraits. And this was for a gentleman who was um, submitting these for a modeling agency. So realistically, we weren't going to do too many black and white. But um, he, I'm going to do the outdoor one, for example, for this one. And let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Male, indoor, I just want to see what the difference is. I don't see a big difference. So I'm going to keep the outdoor one. And with my presets, I don't mess with uh, these. So only everything below that from presence all the way down is adjusted. Um, but basically it's a good starting point so that you can make sure if your exposure and temperature are correct, then the preset should work fine. Um, just like most presets, most LUTs and Premiere and Resolve and Light and um, Final Cut and all that. So what I would do is, let's see. Um, looks good. I would actually increase the shadows a little bit, give it a little bit of shadow in there. Look in my histogram. Uh, I do like to eye things as well, not just go based on the histogram. I bring highlights down a little bit when I increase shadows. Just seeing if we, I'm holding down an option to see if I peek anywhere. See, I'm crushing those blacks on the bottom over there. So we're all good. I still rather open up the shadows. Uh, texture, clarity are fine for gentlemen. For women, I might decrease that because if it's a portrait of a woman, you can see this guy right here. He has good skin, good looking guy. But if I decrease clarity, if I go down, you see how it's kind of smoothing it up and a lot of guys might want that, but it's not natural. So at least if you're submitting these for a modeling agency, you want to look natural. You want to look real so that you don't get flagged as sending inaccurate photos when you're applying. So what I would do is, thank you, we don't need any any help. We're going to go into the brush. We're going to um, increase the size a little bit. And the exposure is at 1.0. I don't want it that far. I want to open up the shadows a little bit. There we go. Mm. Let's see, see how it looks like it's too much? That's fine. The reason for that is when it looks like it's too much, we can at least see where it is. I'm gonna bring this down back a little bit. Still looks like it's too much. 
So I'm going to go back to this mask. You can see it shows us where it's uh, where it's selected. And I am, the feather is up all the way. That's good. But I'm going to bring this back down. I'm going to bring this back down to 10. We just want a little bit of pop in those eyes so that the eyes, our eyes, the viewer's eyes are drawn there. Um, this was a pretty good photo. Maybe slightly adjust the crop. Um, R6 Mark II, great camera. The focusing was top notch. I still missed a few. I think people who review cameras will say that Sony still does autofocus more. But coming from the regular R6, I did notice the autofocus works better. In terms of quality, maybe slightly more more uh, dynamic range, slightly more color accurate skin tones. Um, but uh, most people are not going to tell the difference, to be honest with you. So... Um, it is what it is. If you want to upgrade, upgrade. I upgraded because for video, I wanted to have unlimited recording. And um, I I wanted something small with unlimited recording and great autofocus. That's why I also got the Sony FX30, but I'll make a separate video for that. All right. So this guy is inside and we're going to go to male indoor. Let's see. Okay. And I'm just going to decrease exposure a little bit decrease highlights bring up the shadows and fix the white balance a little bit and i feel like i'm done right there looks pretty good um this was lit with a big window that was to my left so because it's a big source of light it is also smoothing out um the gradients are kind of getting rid of the bags that he had maybe in this past one um in this one it's a little bit more evident because um i i did have someone with a flash um, with an umbrella or a soft, yeah, it was an umbrella, but, uh, I don't think I used it for this one. So this one with the big light, it's a little bit, it's a little bit cleaner. I'm going to bring this down. This is distracting. And that's it right there. If I'm, if I were to retouch this in Photoshop, I would remove, um, this little pimple he has right there just because that's not what he's uh, naturally that's not his natural um something that's natural on his skin tone i mean it's not a scar or something that i ideally wouldn't touch because i would ask if they wanted me to remove that and that's gone thank you lightroom see this on his head i wouldn't remove that because that's always going to be there if he goes and applies for uh modeling or acting gig and he shows up and that's there and they weren't expecting it that's going to be bad but this pimple that i removed is probably not going to be there when he goes to apply for his gig or his modeling gig all right male indoor again so that's before after before after it's designed to work with the uh the colors indoors and outdoors meaning outdoor makes the blue pop a little bit more assuming there's blue in the sky indoors it decreases the um yellows and greens more because usually you don't have yellows and greens there i'm going to remove that um little pimple again probably not up there that's a better skin sample Uh, that's good. Let's go this one outdoors. And let me show you something else too. Let's do this one first. Let's do this. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to create copy. Good. For this one, I'm going to show you the black and white because he actually did request a few in black and white. But this doesn't look that contrasty to me. So I'm going to actually bring up the clarity for this, bring up the texture, and I'm going to increase the contrast with this curves right here. So that's a little bit more contrasty. So he has the option to choose between black and white because he did want a few in black and white. Um, I would remove this again. You already know how to do this by now. So we'll make a, uh, good, 
solid next one this one is a little bit less evident because it's black and white you're not seeing the red right there command z didn't really like how that worked that time so let's do one more i'm just not gonna drag it i'm gonna let it be there maybe i'll drag it to there let's see how that looks looks better and if we wanted to we'll go back to um we'll go into brush we'll increase the exposure slightly maybe increase the highlight and go work on those eyes a little bit brighten up the eyes a little bit just so the eyes have something to go towards so if i you see how it looks too much all right and this last one man i love this one the mood on this one so this is straight out of the camera r6 mark 2 85 1.2 damn that looks good but that's because of the lighting I had. I had the soft box over here on the left or the umbrella, whatever we were using, it doesn't really matter. The light was on the left here, um, I don't know, about three feet, four feet away. And it was basically in between him and me, meaning he was looking at me. Uh, it's, a, it's a cinematic lighting um, uh, way of, of lighting. So, you know, you don't want the light to be on this on this side. You want it to be on the other side. So that's why there's shadow on this side. It looks very contrasty. looks very um, cinematic, for lack of for better words. So let's see how this looks. That looks pretty good. But I want to see if we have any other options. I'm actually going to go to, let's see, Family Shoot Vibes. These look pretty good, too. The only problem is, do I want to use a wedding one? The problem is he he does he said he is okay with a few uh, stylized shots, but he primarily wants the photos for the modeling agency, and he, you shouldn't have these filters and stuff for the modeling agency. You want it as, as natural as possible. Might go to outdoor clean for the commercial part. Open up shadows slightly, and decrease saturation. That looks pretty good, man. Let's go. Wish I had I took my own photos. I want something like that. Maybe I'll hire a photographer. We should do that, huh? As photographers, we should hire photographers. All right. So these are the ones I'm going to send them. Cool. So shift, control all, or select all, file, export, headshots. And we don't use video. So I'll increase these. So he, he's probably going to print a few of these. Resolution should be 300. Well, I, don't, I don't know what's 240. 5,000 by 5,000 is fine. No sharpening, no watermark. Export. So here were five samples with the Canon R6 Mark II. As you can see, they look great. Um, I don't know what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing it to a Sony, if you're comparing it to the R6, the Mark One, the Five, the R5, they look great. If you don't need to upgrade, don't upgrade. There's, uh, you know, there's new cameras coming out every few months. We got the new Panasonic's coming out. Um, I'm sure Canon and Sony will have new cameras coming out very soon. Again, I upgraded because I wanted. I got rid of my C70 because it was just too big for what we did. We wanted more fast-paced cameras. So I got the FX30, got the R6 Mark II. The problem was the recording limit with the original R6 and the R5. And the R5C that we also had, it's just too clunky to have a battery with you at all times and to cage it up like that. Um, for a lot of the stuff we do, we just want small cameras, shoot handheld if possible, or to put on the Ronin, um, the, R the RC, the R S3, the third one, the new one. Um, and it gets difficult to do that sometimes if you're putting on the C70, taking it off, putting on a tripod, putting on that. Anyways, I know there's solutions. There's better solutions to all these, but this was just my experience. This was Arash at Omid Academy. If you want to see video with the R6 Mark II, let me know. If you want to see more uh, photos, I'll edit more. We've got uh, more fun photo shoots coming up. We're going to edit them in Lightroom, retouch them in Photoshop. So if you want to support, cool. We've got courses. you got the presets. If you hate this, just leave a leave a nasty emoji below because emojis are going to catch my attention more than you leaving a long sentence about why you hate me or why I'm doing this wrong. Thanks again for watching.